Thank you, David. With that, we will call the meeting to order uh, today on on Tuesday the 15th at 536, uh, uh, an unusual day for the commission. And I thank everybody for <clears throat> making the adjustments. Uh, first order of business, if we can have a roll call, please. Alderman Cohn. Present. Alderman Narayan. Here. Commissioner Banton. Present. Commissioner Boaz. Commissioner Bradley. Present. Commissioner Peoples. Present. Commissioner Kyung. Present. Chair Strother. Present. And you have a quorum of seven. All right, thank you very much. Uh, the first order of business is the minute approvals, which everybody should have received a copy electronically. I believe they were sent out yesterday or to, yesterday or today, I'm not sure. Uh, we'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes. Move to approve. Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Banton, seconded by Commissioner Bradley. Call for vote, please. Alderman Cohn. Aye. Alderman Narayan. Aye. Commissioner Banton. Aye. Commissioner Boaz. Commissioner Bradley. Aye. Commissioner Peoples. Aye. Commissioner Kyung. Aye. Chair Strother. Aye. And the motion passed with the all present voting aye. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, fairly, uh, a fairly brief agenda will not take long. Th again, I, I repeat, thank you for making the adjustment to get this meeting in today. Uh, the first item uh, is on our agenda. I think Jonathan is presenting the first one from Denver. So go ahead, Jonathan, have your way. Well, thank you, Chair, and good evening to all the planning commissioners, everyone who joins us on this Tuesday. Um, this first item on the agenda is a redevelopment planning and a blighting study within the Jeff Vanderloo neighborhood. We title it the Jeff Vanderloo Scattered Sites Redevelopment Area. It encompasses four city blocks that actually uh, surround Rumble Park. And the developer on the line, uh, Mr. Harvey, he seeks to actually locate the, if we go to the next slide, please. Uh, we actually seeks to uh, build a Negro uh, baseball uh, museum here, um, just adjacent to the park along with um, additional housing um, services, um, housing and a little bit of retail also in the area, all on um, unoccupied or vacant sites. Uh, next slide, please. Additionally, in looking at the area, which so the lots, the 15 lots um, that came in with petition were all um, owned by Mr. Harvey. Um, adjacent to these lots are also LRA uh, properties, as you see on the screen, that are highlighted in the yellow. Um, staff has also uh, requested that we consider these properties to um, join the blighting and the redevelopment area, um, as they are all owned by LRA, and it would give us opportunity to um, also with leverage the um, investment of the Negro League Baseball Museum that's going in the other housing at the same time. Uh, next slide, please. And the area, as staff looks at uh, both the comprehensive plan, which is a strategic land use plan, we find that the area all is um, either neighborhood preservation area, which is in the yellow, which looks to build more um, housing and commercial, or neighborhood development area, which supports housing and um, commercial services that benefit the neighborhood as well. Also, the one item uh, that you see in the green in the center of the screen, which is the recreational open space preservation development area, where all of our parks have this designation, which um, different parks, like if you think about Forest Park, where it has museums and uh, other uh, facilities for you know the public, uh, this would actually have a museum which would fit that as well. Next slide. At this point, we're going to take just a tour around the site, just to, uh, really around the park, uh, to see uh, just kind of what's going on. And we'll start on the street to the north of Rumble Park, which is St. Ferdinand Avenue, where um, this house is not included, but the vacant land around it is. Next slide. And this is just, uh, again, with St. Ferdinand Avenue. This is the actual uh, building, uh, the, the new museum, or the proposed museum. 
Uh, you can see vacant lots around it as well, and that house, which is uh, not included in the redevelopment area. Next slide. And this is the street to the immediate east, and this is just um, northeast of the site, looking down at the site where there are houses um, immediately to the east, and you can see some vacant uh, land along with the uh, museum building on the right side. Next slide. And this is actually looking again on spring, but this is just looking more south where we see on the east side a, or the left side of church an existing church and the right side, the museum. Next slide. This is a southeast corner where we're actually moving to the intersection at um, North Spring and North Market and we're looking at Rumbled Park on the uh, right side of the screen where you can see the playground along with another church and there's a uh, vacant land around the church as well next slide this is um, the center of the market uh, just looking south where of uh, rumbled park on north market where there's existing houses there's only one lot in this particular picture which is the one to the right of the driveway that's a vacant uh, lot right now next slide and this is looking at the the west south southwest side where North Market and Prairie meet, where you could see um, there's a little bit of vacant land along with um, a house that's there as well. Next slide. And the final slide around the park. This is around the northwest side, where you could see there's housing, but also like, um, vacant land as well. Next slide. And looking at the the neighborhood plan, so which was adopted by the Planning Commission, uh, the Jeff Vanderloo Neighborhood Plan. Um, this plan really talks about with the new buildings trying to preserve the architectural um, standards of the neighborhood. So, what the plan uh, noted or different guidelines uh, that they would like new development to follow. So, uh, they included senior cottage units and even suggested you know floor plans for that and how they should look. Uh, next slide, please. Along with um, next three slides, I'll go through the some of the housing architectural standards. So the uh, the French or the Beaux Arts Classic Hall, uh, where they have different elements that they would like developers to include. Next slide. And this one, the Second Empire Victorian style, where you could see the um, the steeper roof. Um, well, a lot of these materials, like the they talk about the limestone look, but it's really a stucco. Um, but they have different elevations that try to mimic the different styles. Uh, next slide. Along with the St. Louis arts and crafts style. All right, St. Louis. So if you can probably recognize this um, three story building with the, if you can see the, the other part of it, that probably has the center window on the side for that um, third story little apartment area. Uh, but um, this style here looks at having the deep porches, the uh, the roof, the deep roof overhang with the eaves uh, as well. And next slide. And the final side of this, we have the talks about the mixed use or commercial, um, where it looks to have more of the parking um, in the rear or just so the building is more the main feature on the site from the street versus just the parking. Uh, next slide. So with those, uh, we PDA did look to have those architectural guidelines as a condition um, of approval of this lighting re redevelopment plan. But um, overall, uh, just to recap that the Jeff Vanderloo Scattered Sites Redevelopment Area and also the five LRA uh, additional properties, we, uh, staff finds that to be in conformance with the Strategic Land Use Plan, also the um, Jeff Vanderloo Neighborhood Plan, and we recommend the commission um, to uh, approve as as seen here and i'm open for any discussion or comments that the commission may have and also the petitioner mr harvey is on the line thank you thank you jonathan uh welcome mr harvey and i think for the best use of time uh and respect i'll let the commissioners ask questions before you give uh, and then you can respond to any of those questions now uh, i'll i want to open up with one basically out of order what i normally do uh, please explain to me why we would need a second Negro baseball museum in Missouri. Well, I think the unique nature of the St. Louis uh, players or the unique status of St. Louis in terms of baseball history is a uh, significant to uh, highlight. Um, the St. Louis uh, Giants were one of the first eight uh, Negro League teams to 
join um, or to create the league. Um, aside from that, um, just the history of um, Black St. St. Louis baseball players is prolific. I mean, you had uh, Kurt Flood who uh, commenced the, ad, you know, the advent of uh, free agency. You had uh, Lou Brock, who was also in the Negro Leagues, uh, who eventually became a St. Louis Cardinal. You had, uh, you know, Cool Papa Bell. You just had a, a, a host of um, uh, uh, St. Louis uh, baseball players, Black baseball players, who have um, been just very prolific in terms of uh, adding to the to the league. So uh, one of the things that um, I've um, been able to, you know, uh, make possible is a, a partnership of sorts and a memorandum of understanding with the Negro League, National Negro League, Negro League Baseball Museum. Uh, and um, we're going to be a, an affiliate and they're really excited about it. So I think uh, what makes us special is uh, just uh, highlighting not just um, the Negro Leagues itself, but the contribution of uh, Black baseball players in St. Louis. I, I appreciate it. So uh, with that, I'll start questioning as the, as the commissioners know. Uh, Alderman Cohn, any questions? No questions. Okay. Uh, Alderman Narayan. Uh Thank you. Uh, could, could you tell me a little bit about the footprint of the museum itself? Uh, sure. Um, the first uh, floor, uh, well, first of all, the building itself is being repurposed from being um, uh, the St. Louis uh uh, St. Louis's last transformer building. Um, so it's been designated as a historic landmark. And um, it, the shed of the building will be used for the museum and the, the basement of the museum will be uh, used for a theater, um, which can showcase uh, footage and film um, of uh, you know, various players as, as well as um, games that the league, league may have had. Um, in addition to that, the first floor will also have a uh, an apparel store, and um, in the apparel store there will be uh, you know apparel from the, the various teams that um, were in the Negro Leagues. Uh, the second floor will be um, a lot of space that can be utilized for catering, as well as for um, events, uh, physical therapy. Um, it's a it's a an open space that can serve the community well in terms of um, providing for um, various activities. Um, the third floor, the set, some parts of the second and the third floor will be used for office space. And that office space uh, will you know, be uh, primary care uh, physician, um, as well as physical therapy, as well as um, some uh, offices for, for private businesses. So um, the, the building itself, is uh, you know, pretty large, it's 22,000 square feet. Um, approximately 9,000 of the 9,000 square feet of the building will be used for the museum, Not, maybe a little bit more, but um, it's, it's, it ha how, has a, quite a bit of space that can accommodate a number of different types of activities. So, so in addition to, uh, to the museum, it sounds like there's gonna be amenities for the, the, the folks in the neighborhood, including healthcare? Yes, um, that would complement the senior um, housing across from the the building itself. Great, uh, you know, I, I'm I'm uh, I've always been interested in the the St. Louis Giants and the St. Louis Stars, so uh, I'm, I'm and the Browns. Definitely, uh, <laughs> definitely uh, uh, excited to see this project, and glad to see that the, it, it's even larger than uh, just a just a museum about baseball. That it's also going to bring some. Uh, some real amenities to folks in the neighborhood there. Uh, I have nothing further. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Banton. Uh, just a, a few questions. Um, first one for Mr. Harvey. Have you had any interactions with uh, surrounding neighbors about the project or um, any meetings in the neighborhood about the project? Uh, yes, I have. Um, actually, I met with uh, uh, Dr. Fowler uh, with Herbert Hoover Boys and Girls Club and we had a discussion um, concerning um, what um, our, our plans are. And um, I think that they're receptive to, you know, um, our dialogue. Um, uh, we've also spoken to um, the, the pastor of uh, the, the church across the street and they're 
receptive uh, to the project. And um, we've uh, pretty much just had, and we've had um, a community meeting um, at the Duval um, branch of, uh, of uh, the St. Louis Public Library. So we've had a number of um, interactions with the community and um, generally I think um, they're supportive, quite supportive actually. Good. Um, and either a uh, question for you or for PDA staff, are, are any of the current lots that are part of this, um, aside from the main museum building, which is getting rehabbed, are any of the surrounding residential lots, do those have any structures on it that would be demolished as part of this project? Uh, no. They're all vacant. They are, it's all vacant land, yes. Okay. And then uh, final question um, that is more for PDA staff. I think I probably asked this at a, at a commission meeting in the past, but as part of these, there's the sustainability checklist that lists off you know, the things that certain projects meet in regards to the city uh, sustainability goals. Um, does that uh, sheet that's filled out have any meaning other than it's just a checkbox that gets filled out like do you have to meet a certain number of those in order for a project to be recommended to go through this process or or what um what role does that check checklist play at this time i will defer to our uh lcra rep uh, zach wilson if he is available for that Good evening, everyone. Um, with the checklist, there used to be, well, I would say that's been, I would say under the slave administration that was added to the, uh, the packet. Um, there is just a checklist. It used to go to another department. We would hand that out to, uh, to copy them with it. Um, uh, eventually we would hope some data was be collected off of that sheet, uh, but there's no, I would say department that would take that up as of right now. So we continue filling them out um, as we move forward, so. And Zach, okay. wasn't your goal to try to make sure that all projects achieved at least 10 check marks? At one time there was, yes. Um, but as administrations have changed, um, goals have changed, so, um, and, that's kind of where we're at right now. We're and with the new rollout of the um, incentive guidelines, we may pick that up. But the concern here is we need a, a department kind of oversee that function, um, and that's not SLDC or LCRA's role. We would like someone else in the city government to take that over. Huh. Okay. All right. Well, food for thought for future discussions, but no further questions. Thank you. And Zach, you may see some comment about that from PDA's comment about the uh, scorecard. Thank you. Uh, just checking to see if Commissioner Boas is on. Uh, not hearing Commissioner Bradley. Any questions? No questions. I think it's a good project. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Peoples. No questions. Very good project. Thank you, Commissioner Kyung. Uh, one <clears throat> one question I have is, how did you choose to build affordable units for seniors? What well, made that decision? Well, I've uh, been in economic development for approximately 20, 20 years. And um, I, I'm just between doing a market study, really knowing, um, I had a market study performed by Nova Granite, and they uh, essentially um, agreed with what our estimation was for affordable housing or affordable senior housing being uh, needed in the community. So it was, our decision making was very much, you know, guided by data as well as just, um, you know, what we know um, is going to be needed in the near future. So that was pretty much it. Sorry, you went out in and out for me, Mr. Yeah. Harvey. Uh, so I didn't catch all of your response, but if I heard parts of it correctly, you were saying you base this off of a study and it was based on a data-driven decision. Just out of curiosity, can you repeat what the study is and is it one that you would be able to share with the Planning Commission? Um, it was a private study that was performed by um, Nova Gratic um, and um, it pretty much indicated that or indicates that um, 
senior housing is needed in the community. Um, I'd be happy to share um, what I what I have with the planning uh, committee. Um, you know, after um, our call or you know upon you know further follow up. Um, but yes, um, that was pretty much um, it was data driven. Um, and I'm, I know this isn't the role of the planning commission necessarily, but I would assume that any of these units that you're designing would include universal design for seniors. Well, um, that's, uh, I, I, ooh, that's a good question. Um, it's really, uh, hmm. I'll, I'll have to refer back. To, I'm, I'm open to it, but I'll have to refer back to uh, what our, uh, what our uh, study actually provides. Commissioner Kell? Hello? Yeah, um, <clears throat> those are the only two questions I have for now. If there's anything um, Ms. Harvey wants to share so as the projects go through the further processes, I think that's helpful information for folks to know to make an informed decision. Oh, thank you. Um, I will, I will say this, Mr. Harvey, the reason I asked my first question is, is I look across my room, I'm looking at my hat I just got from the Negro be uh, Baseball League just last summer. Uh, so <laughs> that it, it's, it's still fresh on me. Uh, I'm glad to hear this kind of intention is paid to that. Uh, just structurally, some of the drawings show that these are multi-level resident units. Is that correct? Uh, in the senior housing? Yes. Uh, yes. So as a senior, am I looking at a two-story house for me, or are you looking at, and I'm just trying to get understanding that you oh, would I'm, build. Go I'm ahead. sorry. I'm sorry. Um, and are you, um, and, and unfortunately, I'm, I'm, I'm on my, my cell. I, 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 so I, I can't see what you're, what yeah. you're looking at, but um, the, the rendering that we provided actually is a, um, uh, a sole building that has uh, 34 units. Um, in terms of the other scattered sites, they will be, um, you know, uh, perhaps uh, multi-level leveled, but they'll be a, a lesser degree. Okay, because as as seniors, not that a sixty or seventy or eighty year old can't walk steps. No, I just, absolutely I just, not. <laughs> not that would not be the choice <laughs> for a new residents in, in life. That's what I I was just a little concerned about that. Uh, with that, that's my last question. Uh, and Jonathan, I'll give you a chance to recap what the board, what the, uh, what the uh, commission is, is recommending. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. And staff finds the uh, blighting plan and redevelopment plan for the Jeff Vandaloo scattered sites redevelopment area to be, and the five LRA properties to be in conformance with the sloop and the Jeff Vandaloo, Jeff Vandaloo neighborhood plan and recommends approval with the condition that the architectural guidelines as described in the Jeff Vandaloo plan are incorporated into the design of the buildings. Okay, I'll entertain a motion. I move to approve with the five LRA properties and the architectural guidelines. Second. There's a move by Commissioner Banton, uh, seconded by Con uh, Alderman Naran, call for vote. Previous roll. Call for previous roll. Hearing any objections? Hearing no objections, it passes with previous roll. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, Mr. Harvey, we wish you the best in your process as the journey is only beginning. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm well aware. Thank you so much, though. <laughs> much uh, appreciated. Very good. Uh, All righty. And we're going to keep Jonathan working in Colorado if he can breathe at this point in that air. Uh, so, Jonathan, <laughs> the next unit, the next item is yours, too. Well, I had a moment for my inhaler, so I'm good. Uh, so this evening, we have the second item on the agenda. The um, last action item is a request to hold a public hearing to amend the sloop at a future planning meeting. I'll uh, just quickly describe what that process is processes so normally we have the planning commission is the sole i guess 
besides the public, uh, you guys are the ones who approve the comprehensive plan of the city. Uh, different states are different where the board of, board of aldermen or the city council uh, might have to, you know, vote on and approve it. But in this case, in Missouri and in St. Louis, uh, the that power solely lies on you and also the public. Uh, so what, how we do this as stand staff um, annually will look at different land uses that have changed over time and we suggest amendments to those. Um, it, it, we do it in that staff does an analysis and then uh, when ready we um, ask the Commission to at a future date to hold a public hearing so what's required is that just like our change in the zoning where we have public hearings now for zoning items we would also have a public hearing um at a future meeting uh what this period also entails um there's a 20-day period where we have the amendments online where the public can view what the amendments are to the land use plan and then at the following commission meeting um, staff would go through those um, proposed changes and discuss why and what happened to those. Um, the last sloop amendment, um, since the sloop was adopted in 2005, uh, there have been two, 22 amendments, uh, the last one being in February 2021. Um, so this would be number 23, which would be this, the annual update. Um, I would say that other updates might happen um, sporadically just because of a adoption of a neighborhood plan where there are sloop adoption amendments in there, uh, similar to what we had with the gravois Jefferson plan, where it wasn't just the annual sloop, but it was brought up because of the adoption of the plan. So it could happen that way, the annual plan, or from just different developments or items that the Planning Commission has had um, approved recommended for approval where it might change so let's just say uh, one of our neighborhood development areas or opportunity areas for the sloop where it might be underutilized land that we want to develop into something great and big so once that the sloop is noting and triggering to developers and people interested that hey here's an opportunity area here you know do something great with it and then once they do that and they you might see that via a redevelopment plan or rezoning and it's built and now it becomes a different sloop category like a specialty mixed use or neighborhood preservation area because something's actually built on that so a lot of these updates are more from the latter where to just explain where different um actions have been taken and it would kind of shift the land use from one category to another uh next slide please so in this case with the sloop, uh, there's a number of different categories um, that includes sites throughout the city all over. Um, there could be green space improvements or stormwater improvements. These are really more of the perpetual ones. Um, if you've seen like, for example, MSD sometimes have the big basins that they have. Um, those are not meant, usually those basins are built in uh, low lying areas that have a lot of flood issues. And when MSD kind of transforms it into a detention area, it should really be more green space, perpetually speaking, um, than a building being there. Um, so that's why, so some of those have happened. So we would change those to maybe a green space, the RSPDA, um, their new residential developments that have happened. Sometimes even a convert light industrial back to you know residential. Uh, we have a number of schools that have closed. So by default, you can see on the screen the uh, dark blue. Th those are the institution preservation. So for schools and religious institutions, if let's say a school closes and then becomes apartments or lofts, then that would take from the institutional sloop to more of like a neighborhood develop or preservation sloop. Uh, so there's a number of things that uh, we're looking at here and uh, including the ones that are MDA or opportunity area that um, have now been built upon and then we want to preserve or switch to a different category and any um, other adopted plans that we have development have come into line with and we need to um, recommend changes. Uh, with that said, in the future, so we're not setting, we were asking for permission to conduct a um, public hearing in the future 
Uh, we don't have a date for that yet. It's unlikely that would be December. So probably maybe in January, we would have that actual um, public hearing and meeting, uh, which you would know on the agenda. But um, outside of that, I'm open for any questions or comments that the commission may have at this time. Um, and, and again, um, next slide, please. And um, the recommendation of approval is just that the commission would um, approve staff to hold a presentation and a public hearing in the future for sloop amendment 23. with that jonathan i think um open just an open question if there's any questions from the commission at this time we'll entertain i'll simply recognize them as they come on if there are any any commissioners with any questions at this time let's see Hearing of none or seeing no uh, questions at this point, I'll entertain a motion to approve the future uh, use of public meeting for Sloop. So moved. Second. It's been moved. Previous moved. roll. It's been moved and second and call for previous roll. Hearing any, any objections? Hearing no objections, approved with previous roll. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Commission. Uh, with that, the last bit of business, I think, is Don. Who will yes. be? I'm sorry. It is it, the last well, book is, is done. <laughs> yeah, thank you for so what Jonathan explained is in many cases we have something that will come, uh, such as when we change the sloop for the area where the where the uh, MLS stadium is. It's a proactive thing. Uh, we do do also sort of one trying to do on the annual basis, which Jonathan just uh, mentioned. Uh, it's part to keep things accurate. It's part to uh, vet some things that uh, we may have used a different technique during the year uh, to approve. Uh, and we've had the sloop uh, challenged in court. We've uh, survived that challenge. And uh, this is one of the steps that we do uh, annually uh, to uh, keep up and be in good uh, stead for the legal challenge. So with workloads and whatnot, and the, as you can see, there's an advance notice to be able to do the do the publication for the hearing. Uh, we just appreciate you uh, giving us the, the authority to do that and have a public hearing on a future date. The basic thing that I'm going to tell you is, yep, the January meet at December meeting might be uh, interesting and have a number of items on it. Uh, the January meeting may, may be the same. So we're juggling those things. Uh, the Board of Aldermen does have a truncated session uh, because of the election season is coming up again. Uh, so the last day the board bills can be introduced, I believe, is January 13th. Uh, so there's some pressures from the end of the year, uh, from the calendar year. And then there's also some things related to the Board of Aldermen. So uh, those two meetings uh, could be uh, interesting. You know, stay tuned for that. And the other thing I just want to bring up is yes, the Department of Personnel has provided me with a list uh, to hire uh, from for city planning executive. Uh, and those interviews are being conducted now. Uh, and uh, it's probably not gonna be where they'll be on, uh, such a selected folks would be on the payroll by the December meeting, uh, but with a little bit of twist and, and turns, uh, hopefully they'll be selected uh, by that time and could make a presence and introduce and be introduced at the December meeting. So after a seven month uh, wait since Cecilia resigned and now having the list of interview candidates and have been doing interviews this week, just wanted to share that information. Is, is that it, Don? That's it. <laughs> Very good. Uh, with that, uh, hearing any other items or issues for business, uh, I, before we close, I will wish everybody a happy holiday. May your families be blessed, your homes be blessed. Jonathan, may your travels be well. Please call me or reach out to me when you get back. I do need you to do that if you would. Uh, with that, everybody be blessed. I'll entertain a motion to close. Thank you for your uh, adjustment of this week. All of us will probably be off thinking that tomorrow is Thursday, but let me assure you it's only Wednesday <laughs> because all day I was thrown off. Uh, may you have, I'll entertain a motion to close the meeting. So I moved, Alderman Cohn. Second. Thank you. It's been moved and second. No call for vote. Have a great holiday. Be safe and enjoy your family. Thank you, everyone.
Yeah, Thank you. Doctor, reach out to the holidays when you get back. Would you? Well,